Let's talk about this newfound trend with waking up at 5 a.m. There are a ton of resources, books, articles talking about this early wake up time and why it's beneficial for us. Working out, journaling, meditating, eating healthy, it's the perfect start to the day, but getting out of bed at 5 a.m. is not so easy. Before we get into today's video, let's clarify a few things. You don't have to wake up at 5am to be productive, and waking up at 5am doesn't mean that you're automatically more productive. It's what you do with your time, regardless of what time you wake up. That being said, generally, there's more of an opportunity to get things done without distractions at 5am because as it's commonly quoted, you're awake before the world wakes up. But clearly that's not always the case because a lot of people do shift work, work overnights, and have rotating schedules. So with that being said, we will context everything today with waking up at 5am but just know that these tips can be applied for any wake up time. If you're someone who struggles with waking up early in general, let's cover seven things you can do to become an early riser. And if you're feeling up for the challenge, here's how you can start waking up at 5 a.m. and not feel tired. The first step to start waking up at 5 a.m. is to have a very clear understanding of why you want to be waking up earlier. In some cases, it might be because you have to get to work or school, but in other cases, it might be because you want to start doing something for yourself. Maybe you want that extra time in the morning so you can work on that side so you've always wanted to start. Maybe you want to wake up at 5 a.m. so you can have a more relaxed start to the day before work and have a full morning routine where you work out, journal, and do all of that before the hectic day starts. Figuring out your why is going to be your biggest make or break when it comes to consistency. Your reason for waking up needs to be strong. This is what's going to compel you to get out of bed every day. And we're going to go deeper than the surface level why using the five whys method. The five whys is a problem solving technique that's commonly used to help you get to the root or the core meaning of why you want to do something. So using that last example, if you want to start waking up at 5 a.m. to work on your side hustle, here's how to figure out your real why. Why do you want to wake up at 5 a.m.? so I can start a side hustle. Why do you want to start a side hustle? So I can eventually run my own business. Why do you want to run your own business? So I can be rich. Why do you want to be wealthy? So I can do what I want when I want. Why is that important to you? Because I've always felt restricted in my life with time and money and I want financial freedom. This last point is your big core why. Once you figure that out, write it out on a sticky note, make it your phone background, do whatever you need to do to create a visual reminder of your why. If you're not a morning person in general, you really need to ease into waking up at 5 a.m. Ripping the band-aid off might work for some people and it might work for one or two days, but it's not very sustainable. We wanna think of this in the long run. We wanna view this journey of getting up at 5 a.m. as a marathon, not a sprint. We wanna revamp our entire sleep schedule, but very slowly and gracefully. Start by setting your alarm just 15 minutes earlier each week. If you currently wake up around 8 a.m., start setting your alarm for 7.45 for the first week, then move it up to 7.30 for the next week. Yes, that might seem like a slow, gradual process, and as much as you want results now, if you've struggled with staying consistent in the past, this tactic really helps for longevity. Let's get there slowly, week over week, so we can sustain it. That's what's most important here. Once you start waking up earlier, you'll notice your body react to it. There'll be moments at night where you feel fatigue much earlier than you normally would. And as soon as you get this feeling of being tired and it's already in the evening, go to sleep, especially in the early days. Sometimes we get tired and we lie down in bed, but instead of actually trying to sleep, we turn on Netflix or go on our phones, scroll through TikTok, and suddenly we've got all the stimulation and we're wide awake again. If you want to wake up at 5 a.m., you probably want to be asleep somewhere between 9 p.m. and 11 p.m., depending on how much sleep sleep you need. So listen to your body's cues in the early weeks when you start shifting your sleep schedule because you'll notice yourself getting tired earlier on in the evening and just let it happen naturally. Resist the urge to stay up because that will throw you off schedule the next morning. For some odd reason, we're all conditioned to put our alarm right beside our bed. Maybe that's because that's where we charge our phone at night and our phone is our alarm and we want our phone nearby. But even before the phone era, alarm clocks were commonly placed on night tables, which never really made sense to me because it's the easiest way to hit snooze and go right back to sleep. And that's why you wanna make sure you are doing things differently than everyone else by starting to put your alarm out of arm's reach. If you can hit snooze while you're in bed, then that's too close. Try to set it on the other side of the room or anywhere that requires you to get out of bed to walk to your alarm and actually turn it off. This is gonna make waking up so much easier because you're already out of bed. But once you get up, do not go back to bed and sleep. Fight that voice in your head that's telling you to go back. Instead, go to the bathroom, brush your teeth, splash cold water on your face, and you'll already feel more alert. 
Instead of using a traditional alarm clock or the one that already comes on our phones, use alarm clocks that require you to think or take some sort of action. Alarms like Math Alarm Me or Alarm Me make you complete a certain mission in order to actually turn your alarm off. You can do math problems, you can play memory games, some of them require you to actually do squats and push-ups. There are a ton of options. It's pretty tough to go back to sleep after you've had to solve 10 math problems or do 20 jumping jacks in order to even turn your alarm off. These apps are totally free on the App Store and will completely change how you wake up in the morning, so I highly suggest checking them out. This might not apply to everybody, but a part of the reason why we usually want to go back to bed is because we are cozy and warm. We want to wrap ourselves up in blankets and just fall into a deep slumber. So to emulate a bit of that feeling, stay warm as soon as you get out of bed. Keep a pair of sweatpants, a hoodie right beside you, so as soon as you're up, you put them on and you're warm. This will just help you fight the urge to crawl back into bed, especially when it's cold and dark outside and all you want to do is hit snooze. So if you do live somewhere where it's dark at 5 a.m., turn on the lights right away. This is where we want to start getting our senses going as soon as we're up. Get the lights on, listen to music that makes you want to dance, light a candle, turn on a diffuser, stimulate those senses going and you will feel so much more alert. Staying in a cold, dark, and quiet room just reminds you of the nighttime and going to sleep, so you want to pull yourself out of that scenario even if the sun isn't quite up. Not only does this get your senses going, but these things put you in a positive and happy mood too, which is so key when you are getting up in the morning. Any burst of energy you can give yourself will go a long way at 5 a.m. And that is all we've got for today, guys, so be sure to subscribe to The Work Life if you haven't already. Otherwise, we will see you next week for another video.